Much of my work is influenced by textiles. My mother was a quilter with a love for bright colors and a great collector of fabrics. I grew up surrounded by quilts, sewing machines, fabrics, upholstery remnants, and more, piled high in what was known as the quilt room. I tried my hand at sewing, but rarely had the attention to finish a project. My quilts and glass are much more successful than any I've ever sewn. My most recent work, 1,134 pieces, was inspired by a book about urban quilt designs. There was a particular design that caught my eye as a piece that would look stunning in glass. I work with many small pieces to make intricate patterns, so it's helpful to glue the pieces together before taking them all to the kiln to load. Instead of having to piece together 1,134 pieces of glass while standing over the kiln, I only have to stitch together 378 stacks of glass. This saves me from the backache that I'd get from bending over the kiln, but also the headache of having to puzzle out the many pieces while standing there. After gluing the glass into stacks, it's much easier to move the pieces around and assemble the quilt blocks. Block by block, I piece together the stacks until I'm ready to take them to the kiln. I create dams as I load the piece into the kiln to prevent the three layers from spreading out as the kiln reaches its full fuse temperature of 1480 degrees Fahrenheit. Any gaps between pieces are filled in as the glass pushes against the walls and evens out in thickness. Throughout May and June of 2011, 1134 pieces is on display at the Kimmel Harding Nelson Center for the Arts in Nebraska City, Nebraska at a two-person show with myself and encaustic artist Margaret Berry. To learn more about glass and the techniques I use, class schedules, and upcoming exhibits, visit calyxglass.com.